In today's video, I'm gonna share with you how I set up the Panasonic Lumix GH7 straight out of the box. Let's get into it. Welcome to the channel, folks. My name's Shane. Just to let you know ahead of time, this won't be a full deep dive menu tutorial guide. If you wanna see one of those on the channel, please let us know, but what this will do is cover all the essential settings I like to set up anytime I get a Lumix camera, and this GH7 is no exception. This video is not sponsored, so if you can, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell, share the video, all that kind of stuff, it really helps. And we're gonna get into the GH7. Here we go. All right, let's kick it off. So one of the cool things about this camera, if you hit the menu set button, and then you hit display, it's going to bring up information about all of the settings on the camera. Not all of the info panels are useful, but a lot of them are now, which is great. So we're gonna start by turning on shutter angle. And you do this by getting into the video menu, which is this top one highlighted in red. We're to go over to the top menu, image quality one, and then over to SS gain operation. Now by default, this will be set to SEC ISO. I'm gonna set it to angle ISO, and this turns on shutter angle. Now on screen, you can see I'm set to 180 degrees. So irrespective of my frame rate, the shutter speed will now be correct. This is a great feature, and it's been in the Panasonic cameras for a long time. I kind of wish they would just turn this on by default, but if you still like working with the shutter speed options, especially if you're shooting video, let me know in the comment section. It'll be interesting to find out. But you can also change the shutter speed now by using this wheel on the back of the camera here. So if I turn it this way, it's gonna go up to 357. If I turn it the other way, I can bring it all the way down to 11 degrees. So 180 keeps everything in terms of motion blur correct. Let's take a look at the autofocus option. So from the same starting menu in the video mode, we're gonna go down to focus. And you can do that by using the wheel on the back of the camera here. It will take you into the focus settings. We're gonna turn on AF detection settings and the subject here will be human. And the target parts will be eye, face and body. If you're doing something like this on a YouTube channel, for example, or if someone's just gonna be walking around in the frame, this is the mode that you wanna use. I just have this on by default and then if I wanna turn it off, I can. Now from the video screen here, if you wanna get into the autofocus modes, you can hit the autofocus button on the back of the camera here, and then you can hit the display button and change up the detection subjects. This is really handy if you're shooting a different subject other than a human. So you can go human, animal, car, motorcycle, train, and airplane. Now I've covered what all of these autofocus modes do in my review video, so if you wanna learn more about that, you can check it out. But the best one for Human detection tracking is this one right here. So just leave it on this and you'll be in business. The next thing I always turn on in any Panasonic camera is this continuous AF. Have it set to mode two. If it's off by default or on mode one, set it to mode two and you'll be in business. This allows the camera to pull focus even when you're not recording. It's just a really handy thing to have. And this only affects the video modes on the camera. So if you're shooting video, Definitely set it to mode two. Up next is focus peaking. It's on the same path as the last two options. And we're gonna turn focus peaking on. I've already got it on because I've already set this camera up, but we wanna change the focus peaking sensitivity to plus two. It's nice and easy to see. You can change the color here. And blue usually looks pretty good. I also really like using this white one. It's just nice and easy to see. I turn on during AFS. So if you're using autofocus single shot for photography, the focus peaking will be on when you use the shutter on the camera, which is great. Same for video as well. So I always leave this on and it should be always on when using manual focus. So make sure all of these are on as well. You can hit the back button to get out of this and you're in business. Now, there's a couple of ways you can get into the audio options on the camera. We do get a dedicated audio button on the top, but I'm just gonna use everything through the menu that you saw before. So we're still in the video mode option. We're down to the first microphone, which is audio one and we're gonna go down to sound record level display on. You wanna make sure that this is on. So on screen, you can see that it's picking up my voice and the levels are moving up and down. This is obviously a no brainer. Now, if you hit the audio button on top of the camera, for example, it will bring you into this mode. Now, if you just touch on the screen where the audio bar is going up and down, you can change the level. I always set this to about negative 12. It seems to be the sweet spot for all of my microphone packs, whether I'm using a wireless pack, a shotgun microphone or whatever, through the 3.5 millimeter audio connector. This seems to work really well, and then I can easily just change it by either using the touchscreen or using left and right on the D-pad. So it's nice and easy to set up, and this dedicated audio button is awesome. Up next, we're gonna change how manual focus interacts with the back LCD screen. And if you prefer to have the picture-in-picture -picture zoom on, then you don't have to do this step. This is just something that I always do, because for my type of filming, I find that picture-in-picture -picture a little distracting and 
too hard to frame the shot properly. So I'm going to show you how this works. So we go into the cog wheel now, which is the second option down on the far left, over to focus and shutter, over to MF assist, manual focus assist that stands for, and we turn focus ring from on to off, and then we go down to MF assist display from picture in picture to full. And now if we're in manual focus and I turn the ring, the focus ring on any lens, it's not going to bring up that picture in picture. This is really handy for a guy doing mostly this kind of stuff these days, but if I'm filming anyone else, especially, and I switch to manual focus and I adjust the focus slightly, I don't want the whole thing or the whole view changing. It's just a little distracting for me. So I find this the easiest way to work. Another thing I can't live without, especially when shooting video, is the center marker. I use it all the time here in the studio or out when I'm shooting in the field. So we go from the cog wheel on the far left over to center marker, and then you have all of these different options, and these allow you just to find the center of the frame. Now I find the second one from the bottom the easiest one for me, but you can choose whichever one you like. If you want it larger, you can pick a larger one. There's no right or wrong here. I just prefer to use this one. You can see in the center here that there's a little plus or a crosshairs like Counter-Strike or whatever, so you're good to go. And this is just a really easy way of finding dead center. From the same menu here, we're gonna take a look at the framing marker. It's currently off, and I've got a quick way of mapping this to a key, which I'll show you in just a moment. But I like to change this to the most used one that I'll use personally, which is always nine by 16. And this allows me to frame a vertical video nice and simply when shooting with open gate on the camera. So I've got this set to nine by 16, but there's all of these different other options here you can choose from, which is great. So I'll select that. You can change the color of the frame as well. And also it's mask or transparency, basically. I just set this to 50% and I'll show what that looks like on so you can get a good sense of what it looks like. And there it is. So if I wanna get rid of this, all I have to do is tap on the D-pad again, and I'll show you how to set this up coming right up. So stay tuned. And now we're going to turn on the red record ring on the back of the screen. The great thing about the GH6 and GH7 is they've got tally lights and everything all over the place. So you know when you're recording, but if you want that on screen, I've got my G9 Mark II set up with the red record ring as well as the S5 Mark II over here. I can see on my display monitor both the recording. So for me, this just works great. Turn this on. It's a really handy thing to have if you're mostly behind the camera and you might not be taking notice of the tally lights. So by default, it's set to off. <laughs> Come on, Panasonic, turn this on by default. And of course, you can just turn it on. I also turn on the uh, streaming blue indicator as well, which is normally off. Now, while I don't stream directly from cameras very often, I like to turn this on just in case I happen to use this at any particular point in the future. Now, if you're wondering how to get a clean feed on the GH7, you can go to the cog wheel over here to the in and out option and then HDMI record output. And as you can see, the info display is set to on. Usually if I'm in the studio, I'll have this set to on so I can see everything on my external monitors and you can see it being recorded on the Pearl Nano over here. But if you want to turn it off for live streaming, all you have to do is go in here and turn it off. It's that's quick and easy. So yeah, just I'll give you the path again. Cogwheel to the in-out option and then over to HDMI record output. One of the cool features that Lumix has had for a long time is called manual focus lens resume or lens focus resume basically. So if you're running a manual focus, you turn the camera off, turn it back on, it's going to maintain focus, which is a really cool thing to have if you are planning on shooting with manual focus. It saves the setup process again. So to turn this on, we can go over to the cog wheel again, all the way down to lens and others, and then go over to lens focus resume, which will be set to off by default, and we can turn it on, and then you're good to go. So again, if you turn the camera off, turn it back on, the focus point will be in the same spot. Up next, we're going to adjust the backlight settings on the screen. One of the great things about these Panasonic monitors is you can see them in broad daylight, which is awesome. So I like to make them as bright as I can. It might reduce the battery life slightly, but you can find the one that works best for you. So from the settings option on the left of screen, we go over to monitor display, and then we go down to monitor backlight. Now, you can set it to auto if you want, which does react quite a lot, but I sometimes find that a little too distracting if I'm shooting outside and the light's always changing. So set it to plus two or plus three, and this will give you uh, more than a bright enough image to see under any circumstance. Again, at the expense of battery life. If you want the most battery life, set it to auto, or maybe even just set it to plus one if you feel the need to. Now that we have access to the Lumix Lab app, I'm gonna show you how to turn Bluetooth on. So you wanna go to the cog wheel, over to the in out one, and then go over to Bluetooth, and you can turn it on here. Now, for the first time that you pair this camera with Lumix Lab, you need to go into pairing. 
and the process is very quick. So you just open the app and you'll be in business. But this is how you turn Bluetooth on. I just leave it on 100% of the time. Now, if you wanna save a custom mode to the camera, it's quite easy and you can title them however you like. So from the wrench icon on the left, again, we're going over to the settings and then we can save to custom mode. Now, if we go in here, you can see that one's already called tech because I've got it set up for this tech room facing this way. If I'm on my other YouTube channel, I would set up a different white balance, a different custom mode and label it guitar or in the blues, which is my other channel name. So you can set up these in a range of different ways, frame rates, codecs, all that kind of stuff. And you can recall them nice and simply just by using the C1, 2, 3 and 4 option on the dial. And this can work for both video and photographic purposes as well. So yeah, you can set this up however you like. I just want to show you where this was because it's something that I always use. I should also point out, I just got this camera not long ago, so I haven't set up all of the other scenarios yet. But if you just want to say set up 30 and 60 or 120 frames per second on different custom dials, you can do so. And I love that. It's one of the really cool things about this camera. All right, let's talk about the custom function buttons. And what these allow you to do is assign a feature using some of the custom function buttons on the camera. Now, by default, this top inside one over here, I thought was not working properly <laughs> when I got my G9 Mark II because it's set to this mode that you can't reassign without going into this menu. So if you're wondering, why isn't this allowing me to get into the custom function button menu? You've got to do this. So as you see here, we're on the settings cog wheel. We're going over to FN button set from the operation menu. And then we're going into setting in record mode. And we can go down through this menu here and get a visual representation of what's going on. So if we need to change anything looking at this screen, we can do it from here. I'm gonna show you an easier way in just a moment, but this is what you need to do to get into the option to turn it off. So as you can see here, FN2 by default won't be set to e-stabilization. It'll be set to something else, but the only way you can change that particular one, as soon as you get this out of the box, is following this menu process, and then you're good to go. So I've got it set to e-stabilization, and now once it's set, right, I can hold this custom function button down for about a second, and it will bring up the menu. It won't do this straight out of the box, so just keep that in mind. It's a little bit confusing. So if you go to FN2, we're gonna go over to the others and video option, and then e-stabilization. E-stabilization gives you gimbal-like handheld results basically by turning this feature on. The IBIS in here is so good already, but now I can just turn it on and off by pushing that button on the front, just tapping it, and it brings me into this menu. Standard is about all you'll ever need with this camera, but if you, want to do some running with the camera, turn it to high and you'll be really shocked just what kind of results you can get out of it. Up next, we're going to assign real-time LUT. Now, real-time LUT's a great feature that interacts with your phone. You can customize your own LUTs. I'm actually shooting in the studio with my customized Natural Plus picture profile. I'm going to try and make this available to everyone at some particular point in the future. I need to work out how to do that and I'll get it out to the public. But basically, this picture profile is a, a twist on the legendary natural profile. It sort of takes out the magenta slightly. Anyway, I'll show you how to assign this. So I'm gonna assign it to this button on the front down here. So just hold this down for about a second. Real-time LUT can be found from number one on the left, image quality one in the center, and then real-time LUT. Hit the menu set button and you're in business. So now if I hit this button, I can get into real-time LUT. And you can see I'm using natural plus, which is my custom picture profile, which I wanna make available publicly coming up. So stay tuned for that. If this video is helpful, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell already if you haven't already. This is a really handy feature, and this is separate from the standard picture profile. So if I hit the Q button on the back of the camera, which is the quick menu, and then we can go down to LUT here. If I wanna get out of this, I can just simply pick a different picture profile like normal. So there's a few different ways you can get into these things, but I just like having real-time LUT as an assignable button much like the Lumix S9. The GH7 also has a really powerful feature called IS Boost, and this has been around since the GH5 and allows you to get a tripod looking shot when shooting handheld, it's really cool. So I assign this to the return key on the back of the camera. Now if I hold this down for a couple of seconds again, it takes us into this menu. So FN1 on the second option on screen, then we're going over to others and video, and then IS Boost mode. Now when I tap on the return key on the back of the camera, right next to where the trash icon is, you can see on the top right of screen, it's changing between a hand with two lines and a hand with a square around it or a rectangle. Now IS boost mode on is with the rectangle, which means it's only for static shots. So if you're moving around like this, that's fine. But if you're walking, you want to have it set to the 
mode with the hand and the two lines. So just be aware of that. This is another really powerful feature. I do this on all of my Lumix cameras. That button is always the IS boost mode. So if I'm doing some walking stuff, I can set it up for a dynamic shot. And then if I just want to stand still, I can turn on IS boost and it looks amazing. Earlier in the video, I showed you how to get the framing markers set up, but I'm going to show you how I map it to the GH7 and all of my other Lumix cameras. So I map it to this down button off the D-pad. So if I push down, the framing marker comes up on screen. And this is the one that I had set last. So it works really well. And then all I need to do here is hold this down to set up that particular button for the framing marker option. You can see the path here from option two over to monitor display one and then frame marker, hit menu set. And now I can turn it on and off just by using this down button on the D-pad. Another tool I can't live without on my Panasonic cameras is the waveform. So all I have to do here is tap up and it pops up on screen. So you can map this again just by holding this down, going from menu option two over to monitor display number three. And then you've got this option here. If I hit menu set here, it's gonna bring up three options. You can either cycle through waveform and vector scope by choosing the last one. You can of course just choose vector scope on its own, but I leave it set to waveform as I don't often use the vector scope. And that's how I set up the menu system and custom settings for this particular camera. Now, I'm of course going to set up different custom modes when it comes to 4K at 50 or 60 frames per second. I'll set one up, no doubt, with variable frame rate on and save that to custom settings three. And if you follow the guide I just showed you before, you can work all of this out. Now, if you're completely new to this camera and you wanna see a deep dive of what all the menu options are, let us know in the comment section, but this is basically just how I set it up quickly straight out of the box. I hope you found this video helpful. If it was, leave a thumbs up. There's a super thanks down there as well if it helped you find something that you didn't know where it was. Anyway, thanks for watching. My name's Shane. I will catch you on the next one. See ya.